Lesson 1.7, Subtract Whole Numbers with Regrouping, Renaming. We can subtract whole numbers by aligning, that means lining up, the digits by place value, then subtracting from right to left. We first subtract the ones, then the tens, then the hundreds, etc. We regroup when the digit in the menu end is less than the digit in the subtrahend. We have 52 minus 19. We have to start with 2, take away 9. But we can't do that. It's not large enough. 52 is 5 tens and 2 ones. We regroup it as 4 tens and 12 ones. We gave a 10 to the ones place. Now we have 12, take away 9, that's 3. And we have four tens take away one ten, that's three tens. So our difference is 33. And as we said in the last video, we can turn our paper sideways to help us write each digit in the correct place value. We must subtract the correct digits in each place value and line up our commas neatly. We can also use grid paper or a place value chart, couldn't we? The state of Kansas covers 82,282 square miles. The state of Iowa covers 56,276 square miles. How many more square miles does Kansas cover than Iowa? We need to find the difference between Kansas and Iowa in square miles. We subtract to find a difference, and we will use the greater amount as the menu end. And we know to subtract from the clue how many more? We can use a place value chart to help us subtract. We regroup when the digit in the subtrahend is greater than the digit in the menu end. So here, using a place value chart to help us, we had a 2 and needed to take away 6 and we couldn't. So we asked the 8 for 1, it became a 7 and the 2 became a 12. It became 12 ones because we took a 10 from the tens place and gave it to the ones place. 12 minus 6 is 6. 7 minus 7 is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. Now we have a 2 and need to take 6 away again, and we can't. So we ask the 8 for 1. He becomes a 7, and the 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. 7 minus 5 is 2. Our difference is 26,006. And we can do this subtraction if we line up our place values very neatly. Our commas are nice and lined up on top of each other. Here's the square miles for Kansas and the square miles for Iowa. We have a 2 and need to take 6 away. So we go to this place value, the tens, and we take one from the eight. It becomes a seven, and the two becomes a 12. Now we have 12 minus six, well that's six. And we have seven minus seven, which is zero. We have two minus two, which is zero. We put our comma nice and lined up for our difference. Now we have 2 minus 6 again, and we need to regroup and borrow from this 8. It becomes a 7. We give it to this place value, and the 2 becomes a 12. And 12 take away 6 is 6, and 7 take away 5 is 2. We have 26,006 square miles. Forgot my u in square. So now we can estimate to see if our answer is reasonable. The 2 told the 8 to stay the same, and then all these digits became 0, so we have 80,000. This 6 told the 5 to go up to a 6, and then they all became 0, so we have 60,000. 80,000 minus 60,000 is 20,000. But if we round to the thousands place instead of the ten thousands place, if we round to the next place value to the right, our estimate will be more accurate. This two tells this two to stay the same, then these three digits become zeros, 
So we have 82,000. See how the 8 just came along for the ride? This 2 tells the 6 to stay the same, so we have 56,000. We have all these 0 take away zeros. Those are all 0, aren't they? Now we have a 2 minus 6. We can regroup from the 8. It'll become a 7. We give it to this place value, and that 2 becomes a 12. Now we have 12 minus 6, which is 6, and 7 minus 5, which is 2. And our estimate is 26,000 when our actual answer was 26,006. So see, by going in one more place value when rounding, our estimate is more accurate and closer to our actual amount. We can subtract to find a difference, then use addition to check our answer. We have 656,424 minus 121,598. We have a 4, and we need to take 8 away, but we can't. So we go to this place value, and the 2 becomes a 1, and the 4 becomes a 14. 14 take away 8 is 6. Now we have 1 take away 9, and we can't do it. So we need to go to this place value, and this 4 will become a 3, and this 1 will become an 11. Now we have 11 take away 9, which is 2, and we have 3 take away 5 here, and we can't. So we go to this place value, it becomes a 5, this 3 becomes a 13, 13 minus 5 is 8, we have to put our comma so they're nice and lined up. We have 5 minus 1, which is 4, 5 minus 2, which is 3, and 6 minus 1, which is 5. Now we can take this difference and put it up here as an addend. We start adding in the ones place. 6 plus 8 is 14. So we're going to regroup that 1, aren't we? We have 9, 10, 11, 12. We regroup the 1 up to here and put the 2 down there. We have 8 plus 5 is 13, plus 1 more is 14. We regroup the 1, put the 4 here. We have 4, 5, 6, we put our 6. We have 3 plus 2, which is 5, and 5 plus 1, which is 6. And look, we have 656,424, which was our original minuend. We know we did it correctly. If the sum of the difference and subtrahen, the difference and the subtrahen, remember the answer and subtraction is a difference. If the sum of the difference and subtrahen is equal to the minuend, our answer is correct. We subtracted correctly. Inverse operations undo each other. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. We can add to put back what was subtracted. We have 8 minus 5, that's equal to 3. We took 5 away from the 8 to get a 3. We added 5 to the 3 to put back what was subtracted, and we have 8 again. When there's a zero in the menu end, like right here, we will need to move left more than one place value to regroup. We can combine place values to regroup two digits at the same time. We start in our ones place, we have six minus two. Well, we can do that, that's four. Now we have four minus seven, and we can't do that. But when we go to this place value to regroup, we can't because it doesn't have any. It's a zero. So we would have to go to this place value to regroup. We can put the seven and the zero together as a 70 and regroup it as a 70. If we take one away from 70, we have 69. And the four now becomes a 14. 14 minus 7 is 7. 9 minus 7 is 2. Put our comma, nice lined up. 6 minus 4 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. And 1 minus 1 is 0, so we don't write anything there. But do you see how we used two place values as a 70? So when we regrouped, it became a 69, and then we gave the next one to the right, that 1. 
That's why we learned about renaming and combining place values in video 1.5. And there'll be a link to that video in this description. So let's try that again. When there is a zero in the menu end, we can combine place values to regroup several digits together. Look at we have zero, take away seven. We can't, we can't regroup from here, it's a zero. We can't regroup from here, it's a zero. We have to go all the way over to the thousands place value to be able to regroup. So instead of looking this as 3,000, we can look at it as 300 tens. We regroup one. One less than 300 is 299. We give one to the ones place. The zero becomes a 10. We had 500,000, seven ten thousands, and we had three one thousands. We changed the three one thousands into 299 tens. And then we had 10 ones, see? We combined these place values and regrouped using all three to become a 299, well, a 299, and we gave it to the ones place. Now we can do 10 minus seven, which is three, nine minus four, which is five, nine minus three, which equals six. We make sure our comma is lined up in our answer, 2 minus 1 is 1, 7 minus 5 is equal to 2, and 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. Our difference is 321,653. So we couldn't regroup from these place values because they were all zeros, so we group these together. Notice I didn't include the ones place when we did this because that's the one that needed the help. I regrouped these next to it and this 300 became a 299, one less. Then we were able to give one to the ones place. Canada has a total coastline of 202,080 kilometers. Japan has a total coastline of 29,751 kilometers. How many more kilometers of coastline does Canada have than Japan? And the words, how many more, is a clue to subtract to find a difference. We need to know how many more there is of one than the other. Our minuend is 202,080 for the coastline of Canada, and 29,751 is our subtrahend for the coastline of Japan. We're going to subtract. We have one and we need to take it from zero, and we can't. So we go to the eight, it becomes a seven, and our zero in the ones place becomes a 10. 10 take away one is nine. We have seven take away five, that's a two. Now we have zero and need to take away seven again, and we can't. So the two here becomes a one, and this 10 goes here that zero becomes a 10 because we gave it one from the other place value. 10 take away seven is three. We make sure we write our commas all nice and lined up. We have one take away nine and we can't. And instead of saying we can't take away something from this zero to regroup, we can look at this as a 20. We can turn the 20 into a 19 and turn the one into an 11. 11 take away nine is two. And now we have nine take away two, which is seven, and one drops down. We can also look at it as 19 take away two, couldn't we? And that would be 17. We have 172,329, and that's gonna be our add end up here. We do our addition and we regroup when necessary, and look, our sum is the same thing as our original menu end, if we marked it all up. So if the sum of the difference and subtrahend is equal to the menu end, our answer is correct.
Many students make math errors because they don't write their numbers clearly or they forget to correctly line up the place values. If a teacher is trying to grade your paper and they see this, well, this should be 768. They didn't quite make this top part big enough. And this could be confused for a zero and this bottom part of the 8 isn't open enough, so it could be confused as a 9. So this 768 may be mistaken for a 108 or a 109. And look here, they didn't line up their commas correctly, did they? They didn't even put a comma in this one. And this 4,000 is going to be subtracted from the 10,000's place by accident instead of the 1,000's place. So the answer is going to be wrong because the place values aren't lined up correctly. You need them to line up perfectly one above the other and have your commas all lined up correctly and you'll get the correct answer. So keep that in mind. You need to write your numbers clearly and make sure your place values are nice and neat one above the other. In our next lesson, 1.8, we're going to learn about word problems with addition and subtraction to the hundred thousands. We're going to learn how to draw a diagram to help us solve word problems. I hope you're doing well. I'm really proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.